So overall, the objective of my, of my program of research was to look at this new conceptualization of teacher-student relationship and to try to explore how it relates to different school outcomes for students. And one area of particular interest for me um, was to look at how this relationship can be defined with students with and without special needs. And the findings I'm going to talk about briefly now actually were collected from a grant supported by the Ministry of Education in Quebec. Um, so mm -hmm. this study was looking at work classroom working alliance in kids with and without special needs in cycles two and three, so fourth through sixth grade. Um, we know that students with special needs are at risk for many difficulties. Um, one would assume that because teacher-student relationship is related to so many positive outcomes, that this relationship would be a strong protective factor for kids who struggle at school. However, we know through the minimal amount of literature that's looked at teacher-student relationships, and specifically kids who have identified special needs, that they, those, those relationships tend to be very challenging, and they tend to be very difficult or strained. Overall, teachers tend to um, report that they are less encouraging to kids who are difficult in the classroom. They have more frustration with those students. Um, they have warmer relationships with students who are academically successful mm -hmm. or who demonstrate positive behaviors in the classroom. If you've been in a classroom before, none of this is surprising. If, if a student is making it difficult, uh, difficult in the classroom, it, you can't help but have some more negative feelings towards them. However, it sort of lends the question that if we know teacher-student relationship is so important, how can we get past these things to develop warm, supportive, positive relationships with students who really need those relationships the most? So the question of this particular study was really looking overall at the effect of a classroom working alliance on school-related outcomes for students with and without special needs. Um, so first of all, before I talk about some, some specific findings, my first question was to just validate what we already know, looking at teacher-student relationship defined as an emotional attachment, and to see if we find these same findings that teachers, in general, feel that they have less positive relationships with students with special needs. And indeed, indeed we found that both teachers and students um, with rated students with special needs as having lower quality relationships on an emotional level and in their sense of collaboration within the classroom. So the next questions we're just looking at overall, looking at classroom working alliance, how does it predict different school related outcomes? So for all students, the emotional aspect of relationship, so that piece, that bond piece, um, when the students rated a stronger, when the students felt that they had a stronger bond with the teacher, um, and let me rephrase that, sorry. When the teacher rated that they had a stronger bond with the student, I said that backwards, um, the students tended to have fewer problematic behaviors in the classroom. So if the teacher felt very positive and emotionally connected with the students, they displayed less negative behaviors in the classroom. In the collaborative aspect of relationship, when the teachers, when both teachers and students felt that they had a stronger collaborative relationship with the student in the classroom, they de tended to demonstrate more positive social skills, um, less problematic classroom behaviors, more academic competence, so a feeling of being able to be successful, being able to take on the tasks asked of them, and more overall more school satisfaction. So they felt more engaged, more motivated, and more interested in what was happening at school. So these were interesting findings for us in showing that not only is this emotional aspect of relationship important, but understanding this collaborative aspect of relationship seems to be very much related to different outcomes for kids, both with and without special needs. Of a lot of interest to me and to my colleagues was to really understand how does this differ for kids with and without special needs. And here we were looking at kids who were, were identified with behavior or learning difficulties. They were identified by the school board. Um, and we were looking at how, how the relationship and the correlation between working alliance and their school outcomes might be different for those two groups. So as you can see, sort of the thin black line is, represents students without special needs. And in general, the graph on the left is looking at academic competence, and the graph on the right is looking at school satisfaction. And both of them are looking at how students perceive their collaborative relationship with the teacher. And you can see from the graph on the, actually I'll just explain both simultaneously because they have the same pattern, but you can see by the line, the thin black line at the top, in general students without special needs, regardless of how they, if they felt that they had a strong or a weak collaborative relationship with their teacher, they tended to do 
pretty much the same on these two outcomes. So if, if, if a student without special needs had strong academic competence or had a high sense of school satisfaction, whether or not they felt that they had a collaborative relationship with their teacher was not significantly related to that outcome at all. But for students with special needs, there was quite a significant difference in that kids who felt that they had a very difficult, strained, or negative collaborative relationship with their teacher tended to show much less academic competence and tended to be much less satisfied with their overall school experience. Whereas those, same, those kids who rated a very high collaborative relationship with their teacher were also rated as being very academically competent and they believed themselves to be very satisfied with their school experience. So these were very interesting findings for us in looking specifically at kids who we know are who are having difficulties at school and who would really benefit from a supportive, um, positive teacher-student relationship. So in general, the implications and the general summary of findings was first that for students with special needs, these relational difficulties with teachers extend beyond the emotional domain. So it isn't only that on an emotional level, teachers and students have a hard time connecting, but they have a hard time connecting in their working relationship as well and in forming collaborations in the classroom together. And it also lends support that understanding working alliance can be a very strong protective factor for students who are struggling in the classroom. And understanding, in particular, this collaborative element of relationship can be very important for those students. And there are also important implications in terms of teacher professional development and how this would translate into classroom practice. So in the workshops that we've given with teachers and many of the teachers who participated in this project, um, we talked a lot about relationship and then this new broadened definition of working alliance. And the thing that teachers, I think, appreciate and understand the most is this idea that they can't connect with, on an emotional level with every student. And not every student, as hard as they try, will connect on an emotional level with them. And um, and a lot of teachers feel very strongly that I'm not here to be your friend and that we do have a working relationship in the classroom. And the other difficult thing is that to say, to develop an attachment or a bond with someone will lead to success is that it's very hard to define what an attachment or a bond looks like or the specific behaviors and interactions that will lead to develop that relationship. But when you look at this collaborative aspect of relationship and you lay out what task and goal entails, you can define very specific behaviors that lead to, to improvement in task and goal. So you can specifically say, when teachers do these type of things in the classroom, when teachers lay out goals clearly, when you check in with students and check in to see what their personal learning goals are and how those align with your curricular goals in the classroom, these type of behaviors lead to enhancing overall working alliance. And so overall, we're sort of moving now to take to do some additional analyses looking at classroom videotaped observations and the specific behaviors that support classroom working alliance and hopefully to be able to develop some specific guidelines for how working alliance develops and what it actually looks like in the classroom because we do know through this research this specific study and several others that it is related very much to school related outcomes for both students with and without special needs.